Hi, I'm Tim Aubrey, and welcome to the 15th lesson of DMAD's second QGIS course. Apologies for the slightly boring background behind me. I'm not recording in the office, so I haven't got the lovely fish and dolphin pictures. Um, I'm just downstairs recording in the kitchen. Uh, the reason for that is because it's six in the morning and I don't want to wake anyone in the house up. All the lessons that we have are planned, recorded, edited, etc, etc, uh, outside of DMAD's normal working hours, um, because obviously we're trying to run an organisation at the same time. So please do bear with us. Um, we try to get back to you with your questions and comments and things as soon as possible. But if we're not getting back to you for a few days, it's just because we have to do all of this on top of our, our normal working day. The flip side of not having the pictures because it's so early is that we do have the birds. So you might be able to hear some of the birds um, doing the dawn chorus during the lesson. If you're watching these lessons as they come out, today is VE Day. So this is the 75th anniversary of the end of the war. So happy VE Day, everybody. This is a really exciting lesson um, for me because it pulls together everything we've been doing on the course so far. So starting right the way back at lesson seven, where we looked at creating buffers, all the way through to lesson 14 that we did um, yesterday. Um, and we're just gonna pull that all together in creating our habitat model. Okay, so as I said, this lesson's gonna pull together everything that we've done so far. So you see we've got our Montenegro file, and that's all I've got, and I've just coloured that grey because it's just going to be our background for what we're doing today. And you remember right the way back in lesson seven, we created buffers around our water areas in Montenegro and our water lines as well. So I'm going to bring those in, and we're just going to make it all visual. So I'm very good, quickly going to change the symbology We've done this a million times, but I'm just going to make it simple blue, just so it's easier to talk about everything we've learned so far. So we created our buffers around these features, um, and we did it individually for both of our lakes and our rivers. And then in our very last lesson, say so lesson 14, we looked at how we could um, combine these, so both combining shapes within the same layer and combining um, different vector layers as well. So we created this combined lake and river file. Just move that down one. Um, and that just created a buffer around all of our rivers and lakes of one kilometer um, and it just simplified it all into one nice water file. Um, and I'm just going to make that a dark blue to make it a bit more representative again. So hit apply and OK. And you can see that we've got our lovely lakes and rivers layer and then we've got our one kilometre buffer for the entire area. Uh, and that was because the first principle in our fictitious um, habitat model was that the, the animal had to live within one kilometre of a water source. Okay, that's great. Now, the next thing we're gonna, we looked at was we looked at rasters. And so, we brought raster data in. I'm just gonna move this down one again. And you see our raster data's got this rather ugly um, black outline from the zero values. Um, and so we're just gonna very quickly set that to transparent. Um, so you go to properties or you can just click on the symbol. Um, transparency is on the left hand side, remember. So just hit zero. Okay, so now we can quite easily visualize our elevation um, with our white areas being the, the highest areas and our black areas being the lowest areas. Uh, and you can see it makes sense because we've got uh, Lake Skadar, which is obviously going to be lower lying because water collects in lower areas. Um, but if we remove some of our data, you can see that actually all of the darker areas, so all of the lower areas are the areas which carry our rivers, which is unsurprising really. So 
I'll turn that back on. The next thing we did was we we clipped our raster using the raster calculator um, to create a layer which was above 1500 meters. So I brought that in. I'll tell you what, this is the binary layer, so I'll bring the other one layer in first. Okay, and I'm also going to set a zero value for this. So under our symbology, oh sorry, under transparency again, yep. Just hit zero, plus, then we apply an OK. And fortunately the scales are a bit different, which is nice for us. Um, but we've, we can see that we've got our areas here, which are above 1500 meters. Um, finally, in lesson 13, we turned this from um, a raster data into a vector polygon, which was this file here. Okay, so let's just jump in at the top. And the reason we did this was because we wanted all of the areas um, which are above 1500 meters because the second principle for our habitat model of this fictitious animal was that it lived at areas uh, which were 1500 meters or above. Okay, that's great. But you'll notice that we've got an awful lot of layers here now, um, which can make things a little bit confusing. So what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna show you first is how to make groups. So we're just going to click add group um, and this is really useful um, if you're working with lots and lots of data and what we can do is we can just add our water files to a group called water uh, and then I can turn all of water on or off at the moment. Uh, you can see it's underneath the, the rest of the files at the moment so we can't see that. So I'll create another one for elevation. And I'm going to drag everything other than the country file into our elevation. Okay. And then I'm just going to move the various files around again. Um, and this is great because we can uh, do a, a bit more now they're in groups. It's a bit easier to see they've got titles. And as I said, we can turn the entire thing on or off. So that's the elevation on and off, but we could do the same with the water. And that's great. So this is something really useful, especially when we get to, uh, yeah, when we get to sort of looking at projects where we have hundreds and hundreds of layers. So let's turn the raster data off now because we're only interested in the vector data. And you can see now we've got our Montenegro country file. We've got, we actually don't need the water either. We're just interested in our possible areas. Um, and unsurprisingly, within one kilometer of a water source and um, above 1500 meters doesn't occur that regularly. So even in these areas, if we zoom in, we can see that actually there's not much overlap. And that's unsurprising really, because as we've already said, the water collects in um, the water collects in the lower lying areas. Um, so how do we create our habitat? Well, we've done it quite a few times already, but we're going to use it one more time. So if we go up to vector and geoprocessing tools, and we can actually clip either either one by each other in this instance. Um, because we're just interested in the area that overlaps. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll take my Montenegro, um, not the UTM, we'll take the combined lake and river and we'll take the area under 1500. Now you'll notice that these have different coordinate systems. Um, so this is the ESPG. And the reason is just because I didn't convert my elevation layer into UTM 34. So I'm just going to do that now. So right click, export, say feature as. And we're just going to 
choose uh, the UTM34 zone. Uh, and I'm just going to rename the file as well. I've already done this, so I just called it ME15 UTM34. And I'm just going to overwrite the file, but you won't have that because you've not done it. Right, and I'm just going to remove that layer. OK. Um, so now they're both in UTM34. Uh, and you remember that this layer is as well. So if I go into properties and go to source, we'll see that the CRS says UTM34. Brilliant. So now I go to vector and geoprocessing tools and I'm going to clip it. So I've got my combined lake and river file and I want to clip that area by the area which is over 1500 meters. Um, and I run this and I've actually got an error where it says that we have invalid geometry. Um, and this can happen sometimes when uh, it's a bit of a bug in GIS where it doesn't transform the geometry properly. Um, but luckily QGIS also has a fix for this. So this might, actually, this might not happen for all of you, but it might happen for some of you. So I'm quite glad it has happened in this case. Um, so what we can do is we can fix the geometry. And the way we do that, we go to processing here and we bring our toolbox up. So I already had it open, so it closed it. And you'll see these options. We come down to vector geometry here. It's just been a little bit slow. Um, but the toolbox is a really useful thing. Uh, it's got a lot more options than we've got in our standard layout. And we can just come down here to fixed geometries. So I'm not sure which file it was, actually, I didn't look. Um, but I'm going to do it for the combined lake and river file first. And because I'm not actually going to use this layer, uh, I'm just going to save it a scratch layer, but we could save it to file if we wanted to. So I'm going to run that and it's fixed the geometries and the benefit if we had uh, the benefit if we had saved it was to be able to choose a name so I'm just going to quickly rename it. So I'm just going to say um, water buffer fixed and I'm going to remove the original combined lake and river because we're no longer interested there. Uh, and I'll just set this to the blue colour again. OK, so recent colours and I used to dark blue. So I hit apply and OK. Right, so we'll try that again. So we go to raster, uh, sorry, vector, geopressing tools, clip. OK, so we're going to use water buffer fixed and the overlay layer we're going to use is our 1500 meters. So the Montenegro 1500 meters. You'll notice now they're both in the same coordinate reference system as well. So I hit run and I've still got the error. Okay, so that means that the actual error was in my 1500 meter file and it wasn't in the, the water file. So we're just going to do the same thing again, go to fixed geometries. Um, and this time we, we're going to fix the 1500 meter file. I am going to save it and rename it. So go to save the file um, and I'm going to call it Montenegro 1500 fixed. Okay, so I'm just going to run that and you'll see we've got our 1500 meter fix now. That's great. I'm just going to drop it down into the elevation layer and get rid of the original. Okay, so third time's a charm. So we get into vector data, geoprocessing tools clip, and we're going to clip the water buffer fix layer by the Montenegro layer. So this time, hopefully, it will work. Both of our layers are fixed. And it has worked. So we get this little task complete, executing clip. Great. So we can close the clip. And you'll see that it's just coming down in this layer. So I'm going to drag it out because I'm going to drag it above all the layers because it's the one we're interested in. So drag it out of 
this and then I'm just going to drag it above all the other layers as well. And you can see that it's come through. Um, it's not particularly obvious, but we've got our little pink areas here. So I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. So I'm going to turn my other layers back on so we can see them. Um, and I'm going to make this green to make it a bit more obvious. Okay, um, and I'm going to just set the transparency as well. So I'm going to make the transparency 50%, but you can just play around with it to, to your liking. And I'm going to do the same for our water buffer as well, just to, to make sure that it's not these two that we're focusing on. Oh, not 500, 50. Okay. And then I'm just going to make this red to make it really stand out a bit. Okay, so this was, I mean, I did it as a bit of a practice, but um, this is the first time I've run this analysis. So uh, I didn't know that we were going to have these small areas. I mean, it makes sense. Um, but we can tell that actually within Montenegro, there, there's only very limited um, places that we could potentially have this um, this animal uh, and because of our scattered habitats the chances are that we're unlikely to have it in Montenegro um, but it means that we could narrow down the area to look very quickly um, but it really is only a couple of small areas oh I didn't mean to click that but here we go it really is only a small couple of small areas which fall within the fall within what we defined so we de defined that it would be um, our animal had to live within one kilometer of water and also had to live above 1500 meters and so you can see very easily our red is very obvious especially once we've set that transparency so this is a really nice clear visual um, yeah and We've done this for terrestrial, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be for a terrestrial creature. Uh, it could be for anything. Um, so I hope you've learned something there. We could do exactly the same thing for um, a marine creature. I just wanted to show you that these GIS techniques, they're not just limited to one thing, um, not just limited to one animal. You can use them in hundreds of different scenarios. Uh, and the last thing is that we we've done a very very basic habitat model here so in actual fact our species is probably going to depend on a lot of other things as well so one thing might be forestry so they might need vegetation cover for example uh, and we could add this in and we could just keep building on this model until we had a really refined model okay that's it in the next lesson we're going to look at how we can do a bit of um, measuring so how we can look at distances and areas. Okay, thanks. Bye.